Thanks, Michael, and good morning, everybody. It's uh, my privilege to be here this morning and throughout day one of this conference, and I've been asked to serve as chairman, which means my role is principally to facilitate the speakers, the panels, and the discussions. And, you know, it's amazing, as we get, came in the room this morning, they were saying that this conference in the last year has actually doubled in size. And to begin, what I'd like to do, we're going to, I'm going to introduce Melissa Hogan in just a minute or two, uh, and she's going to share a very personal patient view and patient testimony and what she's gone through with her family with the MPS2 disorder. Um, but I'll begin with this short little vignette about my uh, pre-drive down here yesterday. So I was getting ready, I was packing up last night to drive down to Washington, and my daughter Megan comes rolling in in her wheelchair. She said, oh dad, another trip. I said, yeah, I'll get another trip. She said, where are you going? I said, I have to go to Washington, D.C. She said, why? I said, well, I'm, I'm going to chair the World Orphan Congress. And she looked at me and said, wow. She said, that, that's really nice. I said, yeah, yeah, Meg, it's you know, a pretty special event. She goes, God. She goes, are, are a lot of the kids going to be there? And, and I said, no, no, Meg, you know, really this is for adults involved, a lot of the people who help a lot of the kids. She goes, oh. She goes, boy, orphans. I said, yeah, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of the rare diseases. And she looks up at me. She goes, oh, my God. And she kind of clenches her chest. She goes, these kids are orphans and they have rare diseases. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 Meg, you, you don't understand. This, this, this is how we refer to these rare diseases as orphan diseases. And this is a kid who's been involved in the rare disease field for 14 years now. And she said, orphan. She goes, that's a silly name. I said, oh, well, it's really not Meg's. I said, let me explain to you how it came about. So now you can imagine the patience of a 14 or 15-year-old girl when her daddy starts a lecture in the history of the Orphan Disease Act. <laughs> and she looks and she listens to all of that. And I explained to her, you know, 30-something years ago, there wasn't a lot of research. And there's 7,000 of these rare and orphan diseases. And back then, nobody really cared. And nobody paid attention. And no research was going on. And she said, she looked at me and honest God, she said, wow, well, things have changed a long way in 30 years. I said, yes, yes, they have, Megan. And, and I share that story with you because I think you think about everything that we learn in this very ultimate, if you will, industry that we're in, in terms of patient-driven medicine. And it's really true. We have come a long way, but we've got a long way to go. So if we could set that as the context and hopefully the theme, um, I think it'll be something that guides us through the course of at least this day. With that, let me introduce Melissa Hogan. Melissa is the creator and the founder of a foundation called Saving Case. And several years ago, Melissa had a two-year-old uh, two year old son, Case, and she was watching a TV show, a TV show mystery diagnosis that many of you may have seen. And she started to connect some of what she heard on that show with some of what she was seeing with her son eventually leading to his diagnosis with MPS2, or Hunter disease. And like many patients and family members in this disease field, she wanted to become involved. And people throughout the rare diseases, as we know, have gotten involved in so many different ways. And what Melissa's done is terrific, and she's actually set up a foundation where they're trying to share a lot of what's in common across, certainly within the MPS2 families, but even much more broadly than that in the rare disease community thinking about different issues, different options, and all the things that families with rare diseases go through when it comes to nursing challenges, to re challenges with reimbursement, to the everyday challenges, and gifts of living with these very special children. So with that brief introduction, let me ask Melissa to please come up and share a little bit of her family experience. Melissa, please. Thank you. 